Marie Jones is our first speaker today. She's an accomplished medical photographer from Basingstoke Hospital in the UK. Her work is amazing, especially given the time constraints that she has, and she's going to be telling you about that during her presentation. Uh, her award-winning surgical photographs have been displayed in the BCA um, uh, bioimages competition as well. Hello, my name is Marie Jones and I'm the Medical Photography Manager at Basingstoke Hospital in the UK. Medical photography can be both challenging and rewarding, particularly when faced with less than ideal situations and under pressure of time, environment and clinicians' expectations. Clinical photographs are a scientific record, therefore should be accurately focused, exposed and framed. They should fulfil the brief and illustrate the subject effectively. A back-to-basics approach utilising photographic knowledge and skills and ability to improvise when necessary is essential. This presentation will describe comparisons and applications of photography and lighting techniques that have been invaluable in the documentation and diagnosis of multicystic peritoneal mesothelioma, MCPM, and in informing fellow clinicians of the visual appearance of the disease and is described in the JBC volume 44 number one. MCPM is a rare condition. The incidence is around 1 in 5 million. Basingstoke Hospital is the only specialist centre for MCPM in the UK. In 25 years, just 100 patients with this condition have been treated there. It predominantly affects women more than men and is a slowly progressive condition that rarely spreads outside of the abdomen. It presents with abdominal pain, tenderness and distension. It is often discovered incidentally in women undergoing investigation for infertility or ovarian cancer. Diagnosis can be challenging due to the rarity of the condition as well as the non-specific nature of symptoms. Imaging is used to aid diagnosis and the patient is referred to the specialist mesothelioma team. Many methods of imaging are used in the diagnosis, planning and treatment of MCPM, including medical photography during surgery. As part of the diagnostic process, the consultant radiologist analyses the images and the consultant histopathologist analyzes the histology slides. The slides demonstrate multicystic mesothelioma characterized by thin fibrous walls lined by a layer of mesothelial cells. There is a high rate of recurrence following simple surgical excision and the risk of malignancy, an aggressive approach of cytoreductive surgery combined with hypothermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy or HIPEC is used. The images show HIPEC being carried out. The lower image demonstrates the surgeon bathing the abdominal organs and tissues in the heated chemotherapy solution. Following surgery, the medical photographs taken in theatre are uploaded to the patient's healthcare record and are viewed together with other imaging in the multidisciplinary team meeting. As well as the team at this hospital, teams from other hospitals are involved in the learning and consultation process in order to give the patient the best treatment. The medical photographs are an important visual component in this process. Some patients want to see their photographs and find it helpful and fascinating, whilst others really don't want to see them. Patients are closely monitored up to 20 years post-operatively. So far, the patient in this case study has had the first three years worth of post-op surveillance monitoring. They will have scans taken at six years, then at eight, 11, 15, and 20 years post-surgery. The prognosis for these patients is generally good, 
with a five-year survival rate of around 80%. Now to the photography request. It was Thursday morning. The phone rang. Colorectal Theatre 2 needed a photographer straight away. When I got there, this was the scene, with the contents of the abdomen spilling across the surgical field. The surgeon said, I need really good photos of this, please. No pressure then. I knew immediately that there was also artistic potential with this subject. I was up to the challenge. I took all of these photos of various aspects of the abdomen and the tumours using the Nikon D300S 60mm macro lens and the Nikon SB700 flash. The exposure was ISO 200, 1 160th of a second at f11. I'll describe these techniques in more detail later. The surgeon particularly wanted to demonstrate the fluid filled sacs that are characteristic of cystic mesothelioma, so I used a combination of direct flash, bounce flash, and transillumination techniques. I'll describe these again in more detail later. I asked for the operating theatre lights to be brought down behind the sacs to transilluminate them. The upper row images were photographed using transillumination by the operating lights with additional bounce flash at ISO 200. The lower row images were photographed using transillumination by the operating lights but without flash. The ISO was increased to 1600 to compensate for no flash. The full set of images comprised of mixed lighting techniques required some balancing of colour to ensure comparability for all images in the set. And this image from that set also used the transillumination technique. It gained the award of excellence in the Bioimages 2021 competition. A total of 20 images were taken and the total photography time for the session was 8 minutes. This includes the time taken between photos for the surgeons to manoeuvre the anatomy and the operating lights. So what were the equipment and lighting techniques used? I only take essential items into the operating theatre. This image shows the usual minimum equipment that I use. I leave the camera bag, extra batteries, extra lenses, ID badge, pens, etc. in the scrub room until needed and of course adhere to bare below the elbow infection control policies. I ensure that my scrub tunic pocket is empty to eliminate the risk of any items falling onto the operating field. I use several lighting techniques but rarely use the ring flash. I only use it when photographing anatomy in deep body cavities as the ring flash gives a flattened appearance with no modelling on the subject. However, it may be used if using only one of the lighting tubes in the ring rather than both so as to give some modelling. The first thing that I ask the surgeons to do is to direct the operating light away from the anatomy to avoid overexposure, hot spots and colour cast as seen in the image on the left. The next is to surround the anatomy in a clean sterile green drape and remove any white muslin swabs from the anatomy. The surgeons are happy to do this in order to get much better results as in the image on the right. And these are the results. Next, depending on the subject, a flash may be used directly towards the anatomy or may be bounced. A flash on a flexible sink cord enables custom positioning of the flash head to gain even lighting across the subject and control over shadow position. Bounce flash is useful to eliminate hot spots on very shiny anatomical surfaces such as the liver. This slide shows the comparison of flash positioning using direct flash in the image on the upper row and using bounce flash in the lower row. Using direct flash, the shadow is pushed behind and away from the main area of anatomical interest due to using it on the sync cord off camera. 
This image is acceptable for the clinical record. However, using bounce flash reduces the harsh shadow as in the image on the lower row. In addition to the images using flash lighting, where appropriate, I will use the operating lights to transilluminate the anatomy. You can see the position of the lights behind the subject. And these are the three lighting methods compared. Depending on the intensity of the operating light and the density of the anatomy, and even the camera and lens used, the ISO may need to be increased rather than using a longer shutter speed, as tripods are not allowed in this theatre, as they could pose a health and safety trip hazard. An ISO of 1600 was used in the transilluminated mesothelioma image on the left. However, the primary appendix tumour example on the right did not need the increase in ISO. Once all the images have been taken, the RAW file is opened in Adobe Camera RAW. Fairly minimal processing is used to accentuate the features of the primary appendix tumour. The processed images are saved as JPEGs and uploaded to the patient's healthcare record. This is the result of using the transillumination technique with minimal processing. These are some more examples demonstrating the additional information gained when using the transillumination technique. The transillumination lighting technique can be applied to any situation where it is possible to pass light through the anatomy, whether in the studio, in clinic or on the ward, such as with this newborn cyst. It is common for doctors to have these torches on the wards. I also now carry a torch in the camera bag, just in case. The medical photographs were viewed together with the ultrasound on the left in order to diagnose the cyst. These techniques can be applied to many clinical circumstances, particularly when internal structures need to be imaged and provide additional information to aid diagnosis. Urn found cystic lesions transilluminate while solid tumours do not. These are cystic tumours of the ovary from pseudomyxoma that benefit greatly from using transillumination in the image on the right to demonstrate that they are fluid filled rather than solid. Whilst taking the first photo on the top left, I could hear the fluid sloshing within this patient's bowel. The operating lights were used to transilluminate the bowel to demonstrate the level of the fluid that is not immediately obvious otherwise. The operating lights shining through the omentum demonstrate how thin the membrane is in places. In the surgeon's words, having an experienced medical photographer on site allows the surgeon to capture images in the most effective and striking way. These and other imaging is used in medical journals, presentations, training and books. In the management of rare diseases, high quality medical photography is invaluable both to characterise uncommon conditions, but also to raise awareness amongst clinicians and aid more rapid diagnosis. It also provides the opportunity to describe the variety of presentations that one condition may have. The surgeon encourages his peers to use their medical photography departments and allow the photographer a little extra time when possible to obtain relevant, clinically valuable, professional quality photographs to demonstrate to clinicians the visual appearance of the disease to enable recognition and diagnosis of rare conditions. In summary, the clinicians really value the additional information that can be gained from analysing the images that have been captured using expert lighting techniques that demonstrate aspects of the clinical conditions that would not be obvious otherwise. The ability to use these techniques, know the anatomy and physiology and work with the clinicians sets clinical photographers apart from the amateur photographer. 
the lighting techniques and applications described are non-invasive and comply with infection control policies. They are quick and easy to implement with low or no cost implications as no specialist additional equipment is needed. A back to basics approach utilising knowledge and skills to produce images quickly and efficiently is the aim, giving the impression that the images have been taken effortlessly and in ideal conditions. The equipment that the medical photography department now has is largely thanks to the PMI's support. They generously allocated charitable funds to the department that were donated by the family of Julian Lee, world-renowned photographer from Hong Kong, who was treated in Basingstoke. His family felt leaving a legacy to support the medical photography service was a fitting tribute to Julian. Thanks to the charitable funds allocated by the PMI, Hampshire Medical Fund and the Red Cross at Hampshire Hospitals, the medical photography service is able to offer a high quality professional service. If you would like to read more about any of the subjects in this presentation, please see the reading list. Thanks to the BCA for inviting me to speak and thank you for listening. Ah, lovely. Okay, so it was, a, it was a wonderful talk and it's always amazing what you have to do, what all of us have to do with very limited resources sometimes, you know, in a small space, small time, get in, get it done and make it amazing. And you did it wonderfully. I, I congratulate you on that. Um, I did have a question here. Um, yep. Has utilizing this technique increased the clinician's demand on your service? Um, part of that technique, but there are a combination of all the techniques, willingness really to try new things and, and with them allowing me to try different things that suit them better. Yeah, they've, uh, they've definitely said this is really the way to go and they're producing so much more for their publications as well by utilising, you know, proper medical photos. Another question here is what other applications could you see this technique being used for? Which of course is partly my question because I know you have a few things you wanted to show us. Yes, we do have it in, uh, in another very short term presentation if you'd like to see it then. But basically the technique can be used anywhere, whether it's on a ward or whether it's in surgery or whether it's in clinic. It doesn't really matter as long as you can get light going behind the subject in one way or another and you can apply it to nature as well as you'll see in a minute and um, within the presentation you may have seen that I used it on a ward to photograph a, a newborn um, baby cyst and by being able to use that technique um, they hadn't been able to schedule a CT scan or ultrasound immediately for the baby but having these photos uh, within a very short space of time on that patient's medical record meant they could already begin to see that, that it was a cyst and it wasn't a completely solid tumour, which mm. is one of the criteria that they wanted to try and determine. Yes. Okay, so we have just a couple of minutes. Can you show us quickly uh, your fungi image that uh, yeah, you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, it will can... literally be a couple of minutes. I'm just going to pop it on. So this is the equipment that I use um, to take any photos, whether it's in nature or whether it's medical. And as we just discussed, you can apply the same techniques. And the, a lot of these were um, because I'd already been doing medical photography for so many years and then really got into looking at preciseness of taking fungi photos, which employs the same technique of precise focusing and correct exposure and use of ISO where needed as well. And as we know, they can come in many varied forms. And these were just taken, all of them were taken with the D500 camera and the 60 mil macro lens, which is what I used for the surgical photography. This blog by Park Cameras um, so really advocates that you should use a tripod However, as 
we discussed before, if you're trying to minimize the amount of equipment that you're carrying around, especially when you're on a bicycle on a 17 mile bike ride through the New Forest on a very hot day, you do want to try and minimize your equipment and you can take micro uh, macro photos very effectively just with that couple of um, pieces of equipment that we showed. And you can see on the left the tripod image and you can see on the right when I used it handheld. And by using it handheld, I will use parts of my body leaning in, keeping my elbows in as you would do in any type of photography to stay as steady as possible. And even using the log that is very conveniently there to be able to stay nice and steady. If you haven't got a tripod or you don't want to carry it around on your bicycle, um, then you can increase the ISO to give you a bit more on, on the way of the shutter speed and, and the exposure triangle um, you want to obviously keep um, optimal. And as we discussed in the surgical photography and somebody um, asked if you can apply it to other things. Yes, I mean, obviously, I just was out one day, um, had the bicycle lights on and just used the bicycle light to transilluminate this lovely little, I think it's a fungus. Um, somebody may be able to tell me more about it, just on the forest floor that was. I think somebody was starting to eat it. I think we only have a minute, we <laughs> only have a minute or so left. So, okay, so you can use it for any subject and some light can work. Um, I also try and compare uh, fungi with anatomy. And if you're starting to worry about me, don't worry just yet. <laughs> this is, it, you can see how the bowel looks like fungi as well. One of our colorectal surgeons also uh, likes to compare his images of pseudomyxoma of the bowel with Snoopy. <laughs> And just remember, guys, all fungi are edible, some only once. <laughs> Thank you.